This one, we have our choice. We, it's telling us x is this, and so we can replace x. It's telling us y is that, so we can replace y. So it doesn't matter. So unless somebody interjects, I'm just gonna pick myself. Okay. Do y. Okay, do y. Replace y with x minus two. Okay. So it's saying y is x minus two. So we can replace this y with x minus two. Okay. We write the equation except for when it comes down to writing y. Instead of writing y, we write the same, you know, something equivalent to x minus two. So 17 minus four times x minus two. I'm going to distribute that negative four to start with. Negative four x plus eight. X is equal to 17 plus eight is uh, 25. 4x, we're going to add 4x to both sides, 5x equals 25, and x equals 5, we're going to divide both sides by 5. Now we know x is 5, so we're going to, I'll use this equation, because we're trying to figure out what y is, and it's giving it right to me. y equals 5 minus 2, so y equals 3. And so the solution is 5, 3. Should work if you try it out. We already know it works in this equation because we use five to find three. Uh, we tried here, x is five, y is three, 17 minus 12, 17 minus 12, five. 17 minus 12 is five, yeah? 17 minus 12, yeah. Okay. So we just tried, I just tested it kind of mental math here. Put a three there, four times three is 12, so 17 minus 12, and that does give us five. All right, that was three, now 10, and then 20. 10. 2x minus y. y equals 23. x minus 9 equals negative 1. So what do you notice about that second equation? How's the second equation different from the first equation? There's no y. So that kind of makes it easier, believe it or not. Because if I add 9 to both sides of this equation, I get x equals 8. Nothing to do, right? It's like for free. We know what x is. It tells us x is the number 8. And since x is 8, we know what x is supposed to be in this equation, so we have to substitute the 8 in there. So we get 16 minus y equals 23. We'll subtract 16 from both sides. Uh, that is 7. So negative y equals 7, and y must be negative 7. So 8, negative 7. So like one. One fewer step needed. Don't even need to like uh, do any substituting. We just are told what x is basically. We take that value of x, plug it in the other equation, figure out what y is. And number twenty. We got some decimals. Four point five x plus one point five one point five y equals twenty four. X minus Y equals 4. Well, we need one of these equations to tell us what to substitute for what else, right? We need to get X by itself or Y by itself. I say we use this equation. There's a 90 decimal minute in front of the X or Y. And if I just add Y to both sides, that leaves X by itself. Okay. X equals Y plus 4. So x is y plus 4, so let's replace this x here with y plus 4. <coughs> let's see a little trick so that we don't have to deal with these decimals. Okay. In this, let's, let's change this equation real quick before we do the substituting. I can multiply both sides by anything I want, right? Nope. Okay, let's multiply both sides by 10. On the right side, we get 240. But if I multiply 1.5 by 10, what do I get? Um, you know how to multiply something by 10 with that decimal point? What do we do with it? You guys not remember this? When you multiply by 10, you can take the decimal point and do what with it? Move it to the right one, the number of zeros you see there. So here we have 
18y and 45x. 45x plus 15y. And now we don't have decimals to deal with. So I'll plug it into x in this equation. 45 times y plus 4 plus 15y equals 240. Distribute the 45, we get 45y plus 180 plus 15y equals 240. 45y plus 15y is 60y plus 60y plus 180 equals 240. Subtract 180. 60y equals 240 minus 180 is 60. Divide by 60 on both sides, y is 1. Now we know y is 1. x equals 1 plus 4. So x equals 5. The solution is 5, 1. Here we go. Any questions there? Now. All right, let's pass in the homework and uh, clear the next stop. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get one of these equations to the if of the form y equals or x equals so that we have something to substitute. Okay. So just take the second equation and I'll add 4x to both sides. You could take this equation, subtract 2x from both sides, and, and do it that way, and it'll, it'll all be the same. But now I have an equation that says y equals 4x plus 15. It's saying y equals 4x plus 15. It's saying that they're the exact same thing. y and 4x plus 15 are the same. Since that's true, I can take this 4x plus 15 and replace it with y. Why? Because y is the same as. So 2x plus 4x plus 15. Ready? Um, can we do another one? Because I told you just, I know what I'm doing, but I just didn't figure out. Okay, yeah, I'll throw another one up here. Yeah, this one. yeah, the way I did it was uh, I actually used the y and put 15y. Then I went down with that. 15y. Okay, so you put negative y and then subtract it with like 15, so you just get then 15y. By subtracting y here? Yes. So 15 minus y is not 15y. 15y means 15 times y. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to multiply, oh. I'm just trying to like add to it. Okay, so if I were to take this equation and subtract y, I would get negative 4x equals 15 minus y. Okay. And, well, it's, we could do something with that, but we're, we're, then the, we're not anywhere yet because it doesn't tell me what y is, it doesn't tell me what x is. Okay. So, I mean, this wouldn't be as nice, but if I, I could get x by itself by dividing by negative 4. But then I have x equals 15 minus y over negative 4. That's not very good looking. Like, this is easier to use. Yeah, I definitely see. I messed up on the first part right there. I should try to start adding y. I mean, x. And then I could probably look on from there. You added x? No, I, like, if I did, I probably could have. Oh, I see. So if you added 4x, you got this in. So yeah, just remember to look at the equations and decide like what, what would be easy to get by itself. In this case, either equation would be easy to get y by itself. Either one. I just chose this one because I had enough room to work it out below. So I replaced this y with 4x plus 15 because that's the same as y. So why not just take a thing out and put something that's exactly the same in there. Like Indiana Jones, I guess. Bing. It didn't work out so well for him. <laughs> So we got four, 2x plus 4x is 6x plus 15 equals 9. So we'll subtract 15 from both sides. 
6x equals negative 6, and so x equals negative 1 when we divide by or divide by 6 on both sides, we get x is negative 1. Now we know x is equal to negative 1, we can substitute that in there and figure out what y is. y is equal to 4 times negative 1 plus 15. y is equal to negative 4 plus 15, and so y is 11. Negative 1, 11. substitution I need to I need to be told that like X and this other thing are the same or Y and this other thing are the same I need to solve one of the equations for my choice X or Y it doesn't matter okay. I can solve this equation for X but that's gonna look messy I can see that coming I'm gonna divide by 11 at the very end it's gonna be this really heinous fraction same thing with solving for Y same thing with solving for Y in this equation but solving for x would be easy because it's just x. It's going to get it by itself. No dividing at the end. Well, add 2y to both sides. x is equal to 2y minus 4. Okay. So I can just kind of forget about this equation because I've, I've made it better. I've made it more useful to myself. Okay. So now this equation is telling me that x and 2y minus 4 are the same thing. They're the, they're the same as each other. So whether I write x or I write 2y minus 4, they're the same. Whether I put x on this side of the scale or I put 2y minus 4 on the side of the scale, they're the same. They're going to weigh the same. Okay, so they're, they're the same as each other. And since they're the same as each other, I'm going to exploit that and replace this x with 2y minus 4. I'm going to take it this way. I'm going to write this equation. 11x minus 7y equals negative 14, but I'm going to get rid of the x and replace x with 2y minus 4. Because 2y minus 4 and x are exactly the same as each other. At least for this problem, that's not always true. Okay? But for this problem it is. And since they're the same, I can now solve this equation for y because that's the only variable that there is. And we distribute the 11, we get 22y minus 44 minus 7y equals negative 14. Uh, we have like terms here, 22y and negative 7y, and 22y minus 7y is 15y. All right, we're breaking down this equation more and more. Add 44 to both sides. Make a little more room. 15y equals, so 44 minus 14 is 30. Divide by 15, and I figured out y is 2. And if y is 2, then I should be able to figure out what x is on that information. x is equal to 2 times y, which we now know is 2 minus 4. x is equal to 4 minus 4, so x is 0. So our solution is 0 comma 2. We've got x, and we've got y. So we've distributed the 5 here. We've got an 8y plus 425, if I'm right, uh, minus 5y equals 500. Okay, remember, all we have here is just like terms, 8y minus 5y. 3y. 3y. And we'll also subtract 425 from both sides, which leaves us with 75. Divide by 3, and y is 25. So now we know 25, what does 25 mean? Why is 25 means what about the situation? There's 25 adults. 25 adults, yeah, why, that's why I like to write this little note. Why is the number of adults? If you made y equal something else, then that's fine. I'll just write something else. And now how do we figure out how many students showed up? 4 3 y 2 3 So what is it, how do we figure out? How many students showed up? So you know that, that uh, 25 plus something has to be 85. Okay. Or this equation says x equals 85 minus y. So I just put y right there, right? Put 25 there. 85 minus 25 is 60. Either way, we know x is 60. 60 students and 25 adults. Can you just kind of guess and check? And why don't we try? 
Let me try a wild guess. 40 and 40. Well, that didn't work. Uh, let me try, uh, well, it's got to add 85. So 40 and 45. Well, okay, then that's not going to add up to $500. Then you can keep trying and changing and saying, well, that's too much money, so I have too many adults, right? I need to back off on the adults and, and substitute in more students. But that's, right, we're trying to learn something new. It's good that you can, like, that, that you understand what you're looking for. You're looking for a combination of students and adults. You, you understand how to make sure that what you found is correct, but we want to learn, we're trying to learn something new. And we're starting off where the numbers are. Nice and easy, right? The numbers come out 60 and 25 out of them. Negative 40.25 and 33.972. We could definitely have systems that have those solutions. Uh, all right, so let's let's look at a different kind of a problem. Uh, we can use systems to solve. So. The length of a sand volleyball court is twice its width. So whenever I can, I'm just talking about shapes or it's talking about uh, pretty much anything. I'm going to try and draw a picture if that's possible. Okay, And I can definitely draw a volleyball court. Not, maybe not well, but I can draw something that looks like a volleyball court with a net going down the middle. Okay. Uh, right, this is like the length across here, the width here. Um, says that the the length. I'm just gonna write the word. The length is twice the width. The length is twice the width. Twice the width. Yeah. Right. Ooh. We knew what the width was. We would know the length. But what's the length? If only we knew. Give me one though. I got it. We need more information. There's no way we could know, right? There's an infinite number of rectangles whose length is twice its width. So I'll also tell you that the perimeter is 180 feet. Oh, I knew it was going to be So I haven't exactly told you what the width the length is. I have told you something that has to do with the length and the width, right? What does the perimeter have to do with the length and the width? So the perimeter of a rectangle is? The perimeter of any shape is? Is that like the whole outside? The whole outside, yeah. Wouldn't the width be like 45 or something? Why? Because like 180 divided by 4 is 45. Okay. Well, we're starting to kind of guess. But then if that's 40, if we're dividing by 4, we're assuming all the sides are the same. Yeah. So then the length would be 45, but 45 is not twice 45. But 45 is one half. Well, if this is 45, then this is 45, which means there's 90 left mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. these two sides, which means these both have to be 45. Mm -hmm. We're locked twice in. Twice as much. One of them would be twice. But if we made this one 45 and it's 90, then it wouldn't add up to 180. Oh. Right? But Haley is, she's shown us something that we know about the perimeter, right? Now I put it another way. If we go all the way around, we add up all of the distances, that should give us how much? 180. Okay, well still, I don't know how long these things are, but I can give them names, and I know conveniently these are the same and these are the same, right? So if I add all of them, I'm actually get 180. So I can add up two lengths and two widths. Can we go with that? Like I can take the length, just multiply it by two, right? And take the width, multiply it by two, and add those together. And what should we get? 180, right? We should get 180. Oh, yeah. All right, that's one equation. Couldn't you just like divide 180 by two, and then that that will be the width, and then you can. No, because 180 includes also these sides as well, not just these sides. Okay. It's all the way around. That's the perimeter. That's the definition of the perimeter. Okay. So we like we use that information. But here's this information, the length is twice the width. The length is twice the width. Like if I knew what the width was, how would I find the length? Double it. Double it. I would double, what would I double? Two. Or whatever it is. What, which one, double which? The width or the length would I double? W, the width. 
the width, w, and that would give me what? The length. The length, right? There's an equation. Double the width, you get the length, 2w equals l. I got it. Now we can substitute. You need to got it using substitution solving systems, not guessing engines. <laughs> I like this engine, you got me it. <laughs> start with me, that's what start easy. Teach you something new. I'll write it out. So now we know that L is equal to 2W, so I can replace, I, I can put 2W in there for L if I want. But let me be a little, I'm like, a little bit clever here. And write a little bit of an easier equation. L is the same as 2W, so I can replace this L with 2W. But 2W is the same as L. Do you see 2W anywhere else? Two W and two W are the same thing, like, and, and two W is the same as L, so I could replace this two W with what? You're just looking at all of <laughs> What's two W equals to? Two W is equal to two W. There's a topology for sure. <laughs> but what is two W according to the other equation? What is two W equal to? Look at the board. What is 2w equal to? 180. No, 2w is not equal to 180. 2w plus 2l is equal to 180. What is 2w equal to? No. 2w <laughs> is equal to? This 2w with l because 2w and l are the same. 180. 2l plus l is 3l. Equals 180. Divide by 3. L is equal to 60. And if l equals 60, then what is w? twice the width, then what would the width have to be? The length is twice the width. Twice the width is the length. 30. 